Hi, and welcome to another episode of D-Link TV q and I'm Mike, and I'm here with David. And we're here to answer your questions about uh, D-Link technology. So if you point your browser to www.dlinktv.com, there's a little web form that you can fill out at the top of the page and submit your question that we'll answer right here on the air. That's right. So uh, let's jump right in. Uh, Brian from Murfreesboro, Tennessee says that he's setting up a new home multimedia system consisting of an HDTV, HD cable, wireless networking, and he has a Windows XP Media Center PC, and he wants to know, with all this stuff, is he going to need to upgrade to Windows Vista? Well, it sounds like he has some nice equipment with all that HD being thrown around out there, so uh, our recommendation would be yes, upgrade to Vista, only because it allows you the capability of streaming HD. Right, so in the first, you know, the XP Media Center PCs came out, they're really high-end XP systems, um, but those were mainly streaming like standard definition, right. you know, video right. rather than HD. So we really recommend that you do upgrade to a, a, you know, just so you have the best of the best. And we also recommend um, on the router side, 802.11n. The DSM 750 is an 802.11n media player, right. uh, so you want to match it up with an 802.11n router because it has the bandwidth and also um, the like the DIR655 that we love so much here has um, a QoS built into it that's, right. that's specifically for streaming multimedia. So the combination of the the nice Windows Vista you know PC, the uh, DIR655 and the 750 is going to be a real nice combination. Right, and his second part of the question says he wants to stream to multiple rooms. A router like this would actually be able to handle all of the uh, the bandwidth and the traffic that he's going to be generating. Right. If three rooms are, gener are streaming video at once, then he's going to have a you know heck of a time with a standard G router. Right. So you're going to want something with a lot of horsepower. And he was asking, uh, would he need a 750 in each of the other rooms? Yes. Uh, in the second part of his question, and the answer is yes. You do need one of these at each TV. That's correct. All right. Okay. So uh, moving on, uh, Andre from Woodbridge, Ontario, says he's had uh, a router for a year, but he hasn't had it secured, right. and so he wants to know uh, how he can uh, secure it and lock it down. Uh, apparently, he has a son with a new laptop that's uh, getting on without uh, permission. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> setting up security is actually pretty standard. Just go into the uh, web GUI of uh, the router, which is located at one nine two one six eight. 0.1 by default, log in, and you can actually run a security wizard, which actually will set up either web or WPA or WPA2, depending on what your router can handle. So you want to go to the highest common denominator, which is if, you, if all of the devices on your network can support WPA2, we highly recommend you use that. If right. WPA1 is the highest, you know, uh, and if you have to, you know, you can still go with web. Right, and we, we encourage you to kind of stay away from web only because it's harder to remember the, um, the passphrases. Right. And it's, it's not as secure as it's like 26, or... like, numbers and letters. That's correct. Right, where with WPA... You could just use a passphrase like, my dog is green. Yeah, <laughs> you know, something that's going to be easy to remember. Right. So it's, it's a lot easier to remember a phrase. You could, you know, make it the title of a song or something like that. Right. You right. know, it, it's easier to do it that way. So if you go into the web GUI... Um, you run the security wizard, it, it's like three or four steps, it's very easy to do, and it will not erase your other settings that you've already configured into That's your router. Right. So it's, it's fairly simple to do, so go ahead and, and do that. Um, okay, so moving on, Bob from Avon, Ohio, says that he has three routers. Each router has a computer and printer connected to it, and he wants to know why the computers can't see each other, uh, or the printers. And uh, will they only see each other if they're connected to a single router? Yeah, so without you know going into much detail, he kind of just gave us this little scenario. So what we had talked about earlier was each router is a separate network on its own, and mm -hmm. that's the reason why they're not be able to see each other. Uh, what we would recommend doing is if they all want to be connected together, just get a like a port switch, mm -hmm. plug it into the back of the switch on the router, 
And then at that point, all the computers will be able to communicate with each other. Just then they're all on the same That's correct. subnet, is, yeah. is what we'll call that. So, um, yeah, so it, it sounds like he's got some daisy chaining thing yeah, going on or yeah. something like that. So, yes, we recommend one router, add a switch to it. I mean, you can even add a 24 port switch if you want and connect as much stuff as you want. And, you know, those are, you know, pretty affordable these days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's going to take care of it for our questions for today. That's it. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode of Dealing TV Q&A.